Hi, in this video we will be discussing about phototransduction. So when you get this question mechanism of phototransduction or Wall's visual cycle, you always have to start with an introduction. So it should contain the definition of phototransduction. What is meant by phototransduction? It is a process of conversion of light energy to neural signals by the visual pigments of the photoreceptors. Okay. So what, uh, what is uh, the definition of phototransduction? It's a process of conversion of light energy, right? So light is falling onto our eyes. That is converted to neural signals. And who is converting it? It is converted by the visual pigments present on the photoreceptors. Okay. So we know the photoreceptors in our eyes are the rods and the cones. And these rods and cones have got an outer segment and an inner segment. And it also contains visual pigments, right? So this, these visual pigments convert this light into neural signals, and that process is known as phototransduction. So after the introduction, you can start writing the processes involved. So first, you have to write the process that is occurring in the dark. What happens to these receptors in the dark? So suppose you know this is a rod cell. And it contains an outer segment and an inner segment, right? Now, let us zoom into the outer segment of these rods. So, this rods contain rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is the visual pigment present in the rods. And actually, this rhodopsin is a combination of Levin cis retinal and opsin. So, rhodopsin is Levin cis retinal and opsin. Okay. Now, these rods contain a channel called CGMP gated sodium channel. So see, this is that sodium channel which allows entry of sodium. And see, it is gated by CGMP. Okay. So only when CGMP is there, this channel will be opened. So in the dark, who is giving the CGMP? CGMP is converted from GTP by a special enzyme called guanyl cyclase. So every time this guanyl cyclase will convert CGMP, GTP to CGMP, and it will open this channel and allow entry of sodium. Okay. So thus we can say that in the outer segment there is continuous inflow of sodium. Right. There is continuous inflow of sodium. Now this sodium will get diffused into the inner segment. And here also it will be pumped out by the sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium ATPase pump. So see there is a continuous circling of sodium from the outer segment to the inner segment. Okay, so what will happen when there is sodium entry into a cell? It will be depolarized, right? So, there will always in the night, in the dark, there will always be depolarization and there will be release of the neurotransmitter called glutamate. Okay, see, usually we say that oh, only when a cell is activated, it will, it will be depolarized and uh, there will be release of neurotransmitter, right? But here in the eyes, it is in the dark that these photoreceptors are depolarized. Okay. So continuously there will be release of glutamate if the photoreceptors is in the dark. Okay. So now let's just, yeah, you don't have to draw this diagram for the exam. This is just for your understanding. For the exam you have to write these steps. Okay. That means there are CGMP dependent sodium channels on the outer me segment membrane of the photoreceptors. Guanyl cyclase hydrolyzes GTP to CGMP. And inside the rod cell, sodium flows from the outer segment to the inner segment. And outside the cell, sodium flows from the inner segment to outside outer segment. So because of this, the continuous inflow of sodium produces a decrease in the membrane potential. And because of this decrease, it is depolarized. The photoreceptor cell is depolarized at rest. And the voltage gated calcium channel is open in the synaptic terminal and that is the release of the neurotransmitter glutamate. So the two key points that you have to remember is that the cell is depolarized at rest and the neurotransmitter is glutamate. Okay. So this is a process occurring in the dark. Now what happens when light falls onto this photoreceptor? Let's just see that. So when light falls onto this photoreceptor, I said rhodopsin contains levens is retinal and opsin, right? This will be in the presence of light, this these this will be converted to all transretinal and opsin will be converted to metarodopsin. Okay, so rhodopsin is converted to metarodopsin and Levens is retinal is converted to all transretinal. So what's the problem? Because of this, there will be activation of a G protein called transducin. That G protein is called transducin. 
and what will transducin do? Transducin will activate phosphodiesterase that is PDE. Phosphodiesterase that is activated by the transducin. Okay. What will phosph phosphodiesterase do? That will convert CGMP to 5-GMP. Okay. So will there be any CGMP available for this sodium channel? No. So this sodium channel will now be inhibited. Okay. So when this sodium channel is inhibited, that cycling of sodium will not occur and the cell will be in a hyperpolarized state. Okay. It, earlier it was depolarized, but because sodium is not there, the cell will be in a hyperpolarized state. So there will not be any release of neurotransmitters. Okay. So this is this is the process which is occurring in the light. Now we'll just see the steps involved. So when light falls, there will be isomerization of Levens's retinal to all trans retinal. And what will happen to opsin? There will be conformational change in opsin forming meta rhodopsin 2. Now what which is the uh, uh, component that this is uh, activating? Transducin, right? There will be activation of G protein transducin. What will transducin do? It will activate phosphodiesterase. There will be activation of phosphodiesterase. And what will phosphodiesterase do? It will inhibit the formation of GMP, CGMP, right? It will allow conversion of CGMP to 5-GMP. So that CGMP gated channel will be inhibited. There will be closure of CGMP gated sodium channels. Because of this, the cell will be in a hyperpolarized state and there will be decreased synaptic transmission. Okay, so the key terms here are you should first write what happens when light falls onto this rhodopsin and then write the two compounds which are uh, activated that is transducin and phosphodiesterase and how the sodium channels are, are inhibited and that the cell is in a hyperpolarized state. Okay. Okay, so now we have to know the detailed steps of what happens to rhodopsin when light falls on it. So I had mentioned that rhodopsin, when light falls on it, it will be converted to meta rhodopsin 2, right? See, this is not a one step process. It occurs through multiple steps. So rhodopsin is actually first converted to bathorhodopsin, which is then converted to lumi rhodopsin, which is then converted to meta rhodopsin 1, and this is converted to meta rhodopsin 2. Okay, so I said that uh, rhodopsin means opsin plus Levens's retinal, right? What happens to the Levens's retinal? Levens's retinal is converted to all trans retinal. Once this isomerization occurs, all trans retinal cannot stay on with opsin, so it dissociates from it. This step is called bleaching. Okay, and once it dissociates, the what remains is scotopsin. Okay, now we need someone to convert this back to Levens's retinal. So that function occurs by the enzyme uh, retinal isomerase. So retinal isomerase converts this all trans retinal back to Levens's retinal, and this step is the rhodopsin regeneration. Okay, so all the bleached uh, rhodopsin can be converted back like this by, by the help of this retinal isomerase. So rhodopsin is converted to meta rhodopsin 2, Levens's retinal is converted to all trans retinal. It is converted back by the uh, enzyme retinal isomerase. And once Levens's retinal is formed, it will combine again with opsin to form rhodopsin. Clear? So this cycle, it was found out by Waltz. It was also called Waltz with your cycle. So next, you have also have to draw this diagram. When phototransfection is asked, you also have to draw this diagram of this Waltz with your cycle. So I hope that is clear. So in a nutshell, when such a question comes, you have to first write the introduction which should contain the definition and what photoreceptors are. Then you should write about the processes that are occurring in the tap and the processes that are occurring in the light. Then you should write about the walls which are cycle and about this road option regenerating. Okay. So these are the points that you have to do. Now for some additional points, you can also write about the role of vitamin E. Okay, there, there's a special role for vitamin uh, A. You can write that and also as an applied aspect, you can write about night blindness, which occurs due to the deficiency of vitamin A. So with that, I think our topic is complete and you know how to write this for the exam. Okay, thank you.